everyone and welcome to another array processing video. This video answers the question, what is a beam pattern and how do we use it? So a beam pattern is the frequency response of a spatial filter. Specifically, it tells us how the spatial filter responds to an input that has a particular spatial frequency. So let's first recall something about the frequency response of general LTI systems, time domain systems that we're probably very familiar with. The frequency response of a discrete time LTI system is the output of that system when we put in a complex exponential signal. So for instance, we put in the complex exponential e to the j omega zero n for all n into the DT LTI system, and what we get out is that same complex exponential multiplied by a complex scalar gain. And that complex scalar gain is h of e to the j omega zero. It's the frequency response of the system evaluated at the frequency of the input exponential. And this is all related to the fact that complex exponentials are eigenfunctions of discrete time LTI systems. So we know that if we put in an eigenfunction, we get out that same eigenfunction Scaled, scaled by um, a scalar gain. And we can find that frequency response a couple different ways. One, we could just put in a bunch of complex exponentials and measure the gain um, that gets applied to each one of them. And then we could plot that gain for each of those exponentials as a function of the frequency of the exponential. But we can also find that frequency response analytically, and you know how to do that. It's simply the Fourier transform of the impulse response of the discrete time LTI system. So how do we define the frequency response of a spatial filter? Well, we do much the same thing. We put in a complex exponential input, and we measure what comes out. Um, so in this case, our complex exponential input is a vector, because spatial filters take vector inputs. Um, and um, it's a vector, a complex exponential vector, where we evaluate e to the minus j kzz. kz is the spatial frequency or wave number. Here we use the z notation because we're assuming a uniform line array oriented along the z-axis. Um, and the vector z is a vector of sensor locations. Okay. So uh, z0, z1, up to zn minus 1 for an n element array. And so the input is a narrow band replica vector. So it's a narrow band. Uh, we're assuming a narrow band signal. So it's a single frequency in time domain, right? Um, and then it's just a complex exponential. So the first element is e to the minus j kz z0. The last element is e to the minus j kz zn minus 1. Okay, and so we put that into our spatial filter. What comes out of the spatial filter is simply W Hermitian V of KZ, because that's how we compute the output of our spatial filter. And that tells us the gain that gets applied. So we call that gain the spatial frequency response or the beam pattern. So we're gonna call it B of KZ, because it can be different for each value of the spatial frequency input. So I can, measure this uh, by putting in different exponentials, and then I measure the beam pattern as a function of kz uh, as the output. Notice, right, I've rewritten our calculation of the beam pattern. It's just w Hermitian v of kz, um, and I can, that's an inner product of two vectors, um, and I can write out what that summation looks like. It's the sum over these n elements, n equals zero to capital N minus one, and it's w sub n, the weight vector value at the nth element, conjugated because of the Hermitian, times e to the minus j kz z n. And this looks an awful lot like a Fourier transform of the weight vector. We have to be a little careful with the conjugates, how we've defined things. But this is essentially the Fourier transform of the weight vector. The weight vector is playing the same role in the spatial domain that the impulse response played in the time domain. So now we can compute the beam pattern empirically by simply we take our single weight vector and then we just multiply by a matrix of different complex exponential replica vectors, right, at different values of spatial frequencies. So I do W Hermitian capital V, where capital V is a matrix, 
Each column of that matrix contains the replica at a different spatial frequency that I want to calculate the beam pattern for. So this example computes the beam pattern for m different spatial frequencies from kz1 up to kzm. Okay, so our final question to answer is what does the beam pattern actually tell us? Well, it tells us the gain that the spatial filter applies to a, a signal with a particular spatial frequency. So if the input spatial frequency is k0, what is the gain that gets applied to it? Well, that's b of k0, so I read that off. Now that gain, it's really the gain B, the beam pattern is a complex number. Here we'll just look at the absolute value of the gain to start getting some insight into what happens. So let's consider the case where k0 is equal to 0. So the input spatial frequency is equal to 0. Well, we read off the beam pattern, right? And at 0, well, here's 0. So at 0, the beam pattern is equal to 1. So the magnitude of the beam pattern is equal to 1, and what does that tell us? That tells us that if k0 is equal to 0, the signal will pass through the spatial filter um, undistorted in amplitude, right? So it applies a unity gain, so it'll allow that signal to pass through with uh, the same amplitude it had at the input. Okay, well what happens if we look at um, k0 is equal to pi? Okay, well, so now we have to look at k0 equal to pi. Um, well, we do need to make sure we read this axis here, right? This is really kz divided by pi, right? So each of these numbers is actually multiplied by pi. So I have to look for pi, you know, where pi is or where 1 is, which I think is about there. So um, I think that's around where 1 is. If that's the case, then the gain the magnitude of that is equal to zero. So what does that do? That says if k0, the, weight, the input wave number is pi, the, it doesn't pass through the filter. The filter, that spatial filter completely eliminates that signal. That may be desirable if that signal is some f sort of interference that we want to get rid of so that we can focus on a signal that we do want. Finally, let's look at one more case. If k0 is equal to 8 thirds pi, okay, so 8 thirds pi, well, that's about right here. Um, and so in that case, we'd say, well, that gain reading off the graph, maybe it's 0.2 there. So that signal, um, it wouldn't be completely eliminated by the filter, uh, but it's certainly going to be attenuated somewhat by the filter. So compared to the signal at 0, um, it's going to be attenuated. Okay, so that's what the beam pattern is telling us. The magnitude of the beam pattern is telling us how much of the signal is going to get through that spatial filter. Okay, that wraps up this video. Um, it's been a short one. Um, there are other videos on the website exploring other aspects of beam patterns, and I encourage you to take a look at them. Thanks for listening.